Mosley, your host on tonight. I know you're used to seeing me right beside my amazing husband, Dr. Michael Mosley, but he is traveling, doing ministry, being about his father's business. So guess what? I have to be here to do it on tonight. And guess what? I need your prayers. Y'all gonna pray with me on tonight? I wanna welcome you to Atlanta Live. This is the place where God lives and thrive. And I pray that God is moving in your life on tonight. We have some amazing amazing guest that is going to speak life into you, going to sing music that's going to invigorate your spirit. And I promise you, you do not want to touch that dial. Matter of fact, get your family and cousins, text them now. Tell them they got to get on WATC. If they don't have cable, tell them they can go to www.watc.tv and they will be blessed. I want to welcome one of my great friends, been friends over 20 years. He is is the maestro in in music and I want to welcome Keith Wonderboy Johnson. He's going to be singing Living Testimony. <laughs>
some great things in your life. I know he's done great things in my life, and I know that I am a living testimony. Are you a living testimony? What has God done for you? He's done amazing things. Oh, thank you so much. Keith Wonder Boy Johnson, please stay tuned because he's coming back, so don't you leave us. I have the privilege of introducing not just a dynamic, amazing, gifted, talented, anointed woman of God, but I can safely say she's one of my true friends. I remember 2000, had to be around 2000, met this woman at Dr. Bobby Jones' Gospel Artist Retreat. I, I can't remember if it was at the Rio or the MGM Grand uh, um, Hotel, but it was at one of them big hotels. And she was the guest speaker. She was brought there by him. And I was just a little independent artist, didn't really know a whole lot of people. And we end up sitting next to each other. And she introduced herself, so down to earth, but so important. And she surprised me showed up to Memphis, Tennessee to my live recording, and that was it. We've been friends ever since. Dr. Sabrina Jackson, welcome her. <laughs> It was the MGM, by the way. It was the MGM. MGM. It was the MGM. It How was. are you today? I am absolutely amazing and wonderful. I am a living testimony. Hallelujah. As wonder boy has said. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, as you know, had been ill and was hospitalized for 28 days. But I stand before you, sit before you, mm. healed, totally healed from COVID-19 and not having any of those... Um, post-COVID symptoms. I am breathing, walking, jumping, laughing, <laughs> praising, because I know God is a healer. Yes. He has healed me. God is, God is so good, and I am so, I know we was um, on the phone with your son and trying to make sure you were good, and I'm just so happy that prayers work. Yes, they do. The fervent prayers of the righteous, righteous availeth, availeth much. much. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Sabrina, tell, tell me, tell me, what is God doing in your life? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, let me say this. It's important to know that whenever God allows you time to sit, that means he has something to say to you. Mm. And so one of the things that he said to me when I was in my waiting period, because I was waiting to be released from the hospital, uh, the scripture they that wait upon the Lord mm. shall renew their strength. Yes. And so God kept saying to me, wait and renew. And so when he kept saying renew to me, renew to me, what it said to me was revisit. Mm. Go back to those original visions that I gave you that you sat on the side because you was listening to other people. Watch listening to other people. <laughs> and so I have re, I have dust some things off and I am rebranding some things. And so you know about colors. Colors is the yes. thing. Essential colors is my personality assessment model that I created way back in 2005. Oh my goodness. And so we are not only rebranding some things with the color system, the model, the assessment, you know, which is all biblically based. Yes. But we're also bringing new lines out to help you walk in who you really are. And so one of the things that we're doing, we have a clothing line. Tell me more about that. Oh, it is called Essentially You. Mm. Because everywhere you travel, you take you with you. I know that. So right. knowing what your personality type is, how God has wired you as a person, you can walk that out in how you look as well. And so the other thing we're gonna do, which I'm super excited about, is we're creating a journal slash planner that is going to be broken up into the four color areas. So oh. each part of the year, we're gonna have a focus. So the beginning part of the year, which January is the first quarter, will be the gold part of the year because goals are planners, are you gotta have your structure. So as you're beginning your year, you need to have a plan yes. for the year. Then our second quarter is going to be the blue. That's spring. Blues are the feeling of uh, relational people. So we're going to focus on your relationships and things of that nature. Then we move into summer, and that's the orange, the fiery, the risk-taking, <laughs> the Davids of the world, yes. and the praiser. So we're going to focus on that. And then the last quarter of the year, we're going to focus on the green, which is the visionary. And as you're moving into your next year, what is going to be your vision for the new year? You're going to analyze what you did this past year and come up with that plan. So all of it's going to be woven together. And so that's why I have on green. You know, you look 
so beautiful. I and um, the first thing I said, where did you get that? Well, come on, tell us. It's a part of the essentially you <laughs> line. <laughs> It is a part of our line, so this is a high-low, so the top is a higher in the top and low, it goes low, you know, it's low up here and then higher, you know, back in the bottom, it goes longer so that, you know, those hips, sometimes you want to kind of get some hiding of that, yes. but it's really flattering for all body types because sometimes you want to show a little something and then you want to have a little something for your curves. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do that and make it professional, yes. make it so that you don't have to uh, show all your business, but still. Well, it's, it's beautiful, and we're definitely going to share where they can be able to um, uh, participate and support your Thank clothing you. line. Absolutely. Now, I know some people, maybe they haven't got the opportunity to be introduced to the colors. I, mm. I really want you to kind of break that down and share with us what those colors mean and who in the Bible do those colors correlate with? Oh, my goodness. That is such a great question, and, and, and I know that she set me up for that because she <laughs> knows the answer to those questions. But the um, color scheme, really uh, anything that has to do with our personality, our temperament type, dates back to eight, no, 460 BC, before Christ, when a Greek physician by the name of Hippocrates, where we get the Hippocratic Oath from, yes. wanted to understand why people behave the way that they did. And in his model, he used the four bios of the body. If you had too much of this or not enough of this, it would cause you to act a certain way. Every other model since then has four at its core. Hmm. And so colors is what I use. And so uh, blue people, are people people. They love people and people love them. They wear their feelings on their sleeve. If they're happy, you know it. If they're sad, you know it. And they represent the compassion of Christ mm. because Christ is the only perfect blend of all four colors. But when we get our color scheme, that's when we're supposed to be moving to be more Christ-like. So the blues in the Bible would be people like uh, Eve had a little blue in her, a little emotion, a little emotional, <laughs> just a little emotion. And then we move to the golds. Golds are organized, structured, dependable people. They love rules. They love them so much they want to make them. <laughs> and then after they make them, they want to enforce them. And they <laughs> represent the control and order of Christ. Because if you think about it, it was something about Christ that where he came, he brought order. Yes. He absolutely did. And then you have your green personalities. Green personalities are visionaries. They are the heady ones. They're the smart ones. They love facts. They love research. And they love looking at a problem and creating a new way to solve it. Mm -hmm. And so they represent the competency and comprehension of Christ. There was something about Christ. He knew what he was talking about. And he was able to break it down in such a way that even the lay person could understand it. That's where parables come from. Yes. And then we have the orange personality. The orange people are our rule breakers and risk takers. <laughs> they are charming, they are witty, and they love, love, love spontaneity. They feel like it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. <laughs> They're just going to get it done. But they represent the command of Christ. It's something about Christ that when he showed up, you knew he was there. There was a commanding presence to him. And so we all have all four colors in us. They're just at different levels. And what I tell people is once you find out what your color scheme is, that's when the work begins. Mm. Because whatever you're high in, you need to kind of bring that down. Yes. Whatever you're low in, you need to bring that up because the more balanced you are, the more blended you are, the better you are at navigating all your relationships and not just the easy ones for you. So let me ask you a question. Okay. Have you ever asked yourself why there are four gospels that tell the same story? You know what? I think because God knew we needed different perspectives. Absolutely. And each of the Gospels are written to a different color. Oh, talk to us about that. Matthew hmm. is the gold book because it's the only book that gives the lineage of Christ. That's right. Then Mark was written to the Romans, and oh my goodness, how orange were they? <laughs> So that is our orange book. Then the green is Luke because that was written to all the smart people, the tax collectors, the lawyers, the doctors, oh my. And then John is the only relationship 
book, and that's the blue book. Yeah. Now, let me ask you another question. Okay, she put me on the spot. <laughs> Which of the four Gospels have no parables? <sighs> no parables. No parables. I don't, I, you tell me. John. John. I was gonna say John, but I didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> you said it anyway. <laughs> but John has no parables, and that's because John is the feeler. Blues feel. Yeah. They go by how they feel. So if I feel you, if I like you, I'm coming. So that's like when you told the story yeah. about when we first met and when you sent me the invitation. I know you just sent it to me to make me aware that you were yeah. doing this live recording, but I was like, oh, I got an invitation. I'm going. I was so shocked when you showed up. I, I, <sighs> that's what you do. That's just what you're <laughs> supposed to do. And people who connect with people do things to let the people know that they've connected with them. Yes. And so that's very important to me. I have a lot of blue in me. So. That, yeah. You know, um, I, I just want to invite those of you, maybe you heard your color or you heard uh, which um, person in the Bible you may mimic. If you know that God is still using you with that color. You may not have it all together. It's all right. All of us are still working out our soul salvation. And right now you may need some prayer. Maybe you need to connect with someone. You need to feel that care right now. We have some Johns on the other end. I want you to dial that number 770-300-9828. Again, the number is 770-300-9828. 9828 and we have a team of Johns that's ready to pray with you and stand and agree with you for what you are going through right now. Dr. Sabrina, um, I know you have um, a, so many different hats that you wear. You are an actress. I know you sing. Um, but you, one thing I've learned based on your expertise, when it comes to people issues, people problems, you got to call Dr. Sabrina. <laughs> what is one of the most difficult situations you've had to deal with, but you saw that your, um, your program colors really helped? Maybe it was a church, maybe it was a corporation, because I know you go and speak for McDonald's and all these top people all over across the country in different continents. What was one of the most difficult, I would say, assignments? that you had and how did the colors help them? I think one of the di most difficult assignments is anytime that there's just conflict among people. Because one of the things with conflict among people, especially when it comes to differences, it, whether it be racial, whether it be a size, whether it be the LGBTQ community, those differences, people get, uh, they dig their heels in and they feel that they're right. And they don't want to listen to another perspective. Mm. And so it's really important that people understand that we really have more alike than we have as differences. So even when I go into places and they say, well, they, they're having problems because the black against the white or the Hispanics against the age, whatever. When I do colors, it creates a level playing field. Because the very person that you think that you don't like, then they, your same color. <laughs> And you're able to sit in the same group and see each other through a different lens. So what I love about it is it creates a different lens and it creates a common playing field that everybody can then talk in colors. And colors is not judgmental. Colors in this model is a strength-based model. So you begin to see the strengths in the things that you thought was something that was designed to get up under your skin. So it has been so transformational in families, in churches, you know, and not only can I come in and do a workshop, but I can preach the thing. I can take you to the word. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you have word to back, back it up. Oh, I got word to back it up. And so it is so powerful when people get the aha light that they go, oh, that's why we beefing. Yes. And it doesn't have anything to do with me personally. It's just that they're busy doing them. And I say this all the time. When you understand what you're working with, then you know how to work it. Amen to that. So, um, for those that are struggling with your boss or a coworker mm. on your job, you need to call Dr. Sabrina. How can we contact you? Oh, just go to my website. Everything is there. Sabrina Jackson, all one word, dot com. 
All right, say that again. Sabrina Jackson, all one word, dot com. All right, if you having issues, uh, she go to schools, she talk with corporations, she go to churches, she go to conferences, even if you want to invite her on the radio, whatever, call Dr. Sabrina. You know, this is our night of prayer and the prophetic, and how has prayer impacted your life outside of God healing you recently? Ooh. What are some ways that God has, uh, prayer has impacted your career and your business as an entrepreneur? Well, I will say this, is that sometimes you, as a person, just people, we look at a situation and we think that that's what we want. Mm. And so I've had situations where people have called me and says, well, we need your credentials to write in this grant. And I would go, oh, okay. And then they'll say, well, once we get the grant, we're gonna pay you so many thousands of dollars and we're gonna write you in. And I did all of that and they got the grant and they never called me. Yeah. And it hurt my feelings. I was devastated. And I remember praying to God and saying, why can't I have the opportunity? Why can't I have the thousands of dollars that I've worked hard for? Yes. And God was very clear to me. He says, uh, I will do exceedingly, mm. abundantly, above all you can ask or think. And so trust and believe, I got you. Yeah. So some of the things that we see we never see the whole. Mm. We can't see as far as he can see. And so what I say about that particular situation, they never called me, but maybe two years into the grant, every last one of them w went to jail. Oh, wow. But guess who didn't even get a call about jail? You. Even though my name was in the proposal, yeah. they never called me. So when they got in trouble, I was never deposed anything. God will cover, cover, cover you. you. And, and you know, somebody, you may be going through a situation right now where your back is up against the wall. Maybe you feel like you've been forgotten. Mm -hmm. You did the work. You showed up for somebody else, but then they didn't show up for you. I want you to know you have a friend in Jesus. And I want you to dial that number, 770-300-9828. And I promise you, they're gonna be there to pray with you through whatever you're going through. Dr. Sabrina, we have just a short time. I just want you to just say something positive to our people as you go. Well, I wanna let people know that during this holiday season, one, uh, Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. So don't dig your heels in and get into a bunch of debt. Don't do things for folk and then they don't appreciate it. Spend some time with some self-care. And what I say about self-care is that self-care is a requirement, not a recommendation. This is something you absolutely need to do. Find the things that bring you joy and do them on purpose. Spend some time looking at changing sing laughter because laughter is medicine for your soul. So get your giggle on today. Amazing. Dr. Sabrina, go to sabrinajackson.com and connect with her. Now my brother is coming back, Keith Wonderboy Johnson, and he's singing, It Was You. As I look back over my life, think about Lord, I start reflecting and I realize it was you that brought me through. Can I talk to y'all for a minute? For every moment, I can't explain. Tears in my eyes. I didn't know how I was going to get through this pain. Trials and tribulations. That came my way. You were my provider. Now, right here, I can share. Sickness in my body. It felt like I wasn't gonna get well. But what you did, Jesus. You held my body. And I all the world I can tell. Depression had me down for years. Day and night I 
I cried countless tears But you brought joy into my life Now Seconds take time out and give God a thank you praise. It was you, Jesus. As a young man, I love Santa Claus, but it wasn't Santa Claus that did it. It was you, Jesus. It was you. Tell the Lord, thank you. It was you, Jesus. Nobody, 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 nobody but you. was you. God must get all of the glory. Even on my best day, I couldn't even stand to what God can do. Somebody need to say, God, I thank you for being there for me. You know, on tonight as I was traveling here and I said, God, what are you saying right now? What can I share with the people of God on tonight? And he gave me this one word. He said, think. And I want to encourage you all on tonight to think. And when I was thinking of a scripture that talks about thinking, I, I had to go over to Philippians 4 and 18, and it says, Finally, brothering, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are, of, are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on those things. You know, somebody say that if you really want to have a good day, all you got to do is think positive. Even though there's negativity around you, even though there's drama around you, there are some courageous people that are willing to stand and ignore negativity. On tonight, let's look at think, think, think. So I, 
I say, Holy Spirit, give me something. Give me an acronym. I like things where people can kind of remember. So I want y'all to take notes. Get your, get your pen, get, get your paper real quick. Somebody get your cell phone out. We're going to take these notes. So let's look at T. What is God saying here? God says, I need you to think and thank me because I've been there for you. When others left you, when others said you could never make it be anything, I was right there by your side. Even when some people turned their back on you, when they laughed behind your back, some of them was your best friend and you found out later they were stabbing you in your back. But God said, I need you to thank me. Yes, you've been wanting me to move for you. Yes, you've been want, wanting me to do other new things in your life. But he said, I've already done everything. Now I need you just to thank me because it's on the way. It's in route to you. So we're going to think and we're going to think. Let's look at I, I mean H. H, I say, okay, what about H, God? And the Holy Spirit says, I want you to think and hang on. I know so many been going through. Some of you all have lost loved ones. Some of you been the one in the hospital bed, like our guest, Dr. Sabrina Jackson. You know, but God say, hang on. Trials, they come to make you stronger. They come to build your muscle. They come to make you, not to break you. So God say, I still love you. But sometimes I have to allow certain things to happen because I'm trying to work some patience inside of you so that you will, will be almost perfect and wanting nothing. He's perfecting you. He's perf perfecting some things inside of you so you can flow and operate in that mixture of colors and represent Jesus like Dr. Sabrina was talking about earlier. So we got to think and thank. And then we got to think and we got to hang on because the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endureth to the end. Is there someone you, you want to hang on? I promise you, you can. You can hang on. All you got to do is make the decision. You know what? I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to give up. Even though everything around me is saying I need to get, give up, I ought to give up, I should have gave up, but we're going to stand in and in this race, we're going to keep going. We're not going to allow fear to get us. Yes, the Bible says God having given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mine. So I don't care what you're going through. Our God is able. Okay? So we're going to think and we're going to think. We're going to think and we're going to hang on. And I, I say, Holy Spirit, what, 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 what you going to give me for I? And God said, I, I need you to ignore negativity. Some of us are weighed down because we allow any and everything into our atmosphere. God said, I need you to be a good steward over your atmosphere. You know, a lot of times we look and, and we invest in our home, we invest in nice cars, we invest in our community, we in, invest in our children, but a lot of times we forget to invest in our space. You have to protect your space because when you learn to protect your space, you protect your peace. You protect your joy. So we're going to ignore negativity. So we're going to think and we're going to think. We're going to think and we're going to hang on. We're going to think and ignore negativity. And then the Holy Spirit for in shared this with me. We're going to think and know that nothing is impossible with God. The Bible it talks about us. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we may ever ask or think according to the power that is working where? In us. That's why we have to work our faith. We have to work our vision. We have to work and know that when we are working our faith, that it is happening in the present. 
It is happening right now. Somebody right now, you need to work your faith. I don't know what you believe in God for, but you need to just start speaking and saying that it is done. It is done in the name of Jesus. So for those that's taking notes, we're going to say, we're going to think and we're going to think. We're going to think and we're going to hang on. We're going to think and we're going to ignore negativity. We're going to think and nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible without, with God, without God. And lastly, the last thing the Holy Spirit gave me for K, we're going to think and my favorite scripture, know that all things, everybody say all things, all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. If you love the Lord, I need, right in your living room, wherever you are, I need you to say, Lord, I love you. He's talking to you. He's talking about you. So we're going to think and we're going to know that God is working everything together, the challenging, even the good times, those times where you're wondering if God is with you, he's with you. He's just working it all out. You can't have lemonade without the bitter lemon, the sour lemon. But all you got to do is put that water and that sugar in it, and it makes it so sweet, especially here in the South. We love some lemonade, and some of y'all like to uh, mix some tea in there with it, and y'all call it a muddy, muddy water. Yeah, I know about that. But we're going to think. Again, Philippians 4 and 8, we're going to think on those things that are lovely, that are of good report. We're going to turn away from all that negativity. And lastly, I want you to know that God is thinking about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's thinking good of you. Yes, you may have slipped up. You may have done some things that you wasn't supposed to do, but God is forgiving God. And for those of you that have never given your life to Christ, the Bible says, Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that he was raised from the dead, he said, you are saved. So for those that want to give your life to Christ, just repeat after me and say, Lord, I accept you in my heart to be the captain of my life, to lead and guide me into truth, and I am willing and available to you. If you just prayed that with me, you are saved. Congratulations. Welcome to the body of Christ. I bless you in the name of Jesus. You keep going and keep thinking. I want to bring back my brother Keith Wonderboy Johnson. He's going to be singing 12 Days of Christmas. Hallelujah. Everybody, come on, let's celebrate Jesus now. On the first day of Christmas, Jesus came to me.
Welcome back to Atlanta Live. We just enjoyed Mr. Keith Wonderboy Johnson singing 12 Days of Christmas. I love, you're so creative. I love the lyrics and it is a song that gets played every single year in my library. <laughs> so Keith, how are you doing? I'm blessed. You know? I'm blessed, I'm still here. Let me do this pandemic and if you six feet above the ground, mm. ain't nothing to complain about. Just take it and be blessed. I, I know that's right. I'm so glad you were able to come and be here with us on tonight. Please just share with me. This is our night of the prayer and prophetic. I wanna find out from you, how has the prophetic impact your life? Well, it definitely has. I believe in prophecies and Lord speaking and pouring into somebody and putting in your life. And I would say the majority, I've always been warned before. You know, I knew it was coming. You might didn't say the di direct, but you know, the Lord will always send an angel and put a word in my life and I, I, that is definitely dear to me. Well, you know, I, you have an amazing um, story, um, becoming a singer. I think at the age of five, and your father was a known singer. And I know you're from the New York area. Right. Um, but I think what is even more exciting is how God even brought us together. It, I, that's why I always, I thank God for Dr. Bobby Jones, because I met you as well. I think at the MGM yeah, my, as well. My first time. <laughs> yes. The Bobby Jones show. And I think it was our first time as well, but it was with my sister when we had our group and and I remember he only invited so many people from that particular taping right. and whoever went is the ones that won in right. Vegas and we went to Florida. Right. And and got a chance to minister at Disney World at the Epcot Center and I know y'all was there because yeah. Yeah, yeah, we all came together at the end and hung out at the mm -hmm. resort. And our family just, we love Keith yeah. Wonderboy Johnson. I had never seen, I'm, you know, I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> but I had never saw a turkey leg that big before. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I was blown away. <laughs> but you know, I just thank God that God connected us. Tell us what is going on in your ministry right now and, and what music do you have out? Okay, I am uh, presently prom promoting 12 Days of Christmas. I have a, 
our Christmas CD is a family Christmas is uh, available at all digital outlets. So, and I also those other songs. I have a brand new CD coming out top of the year, February uh, 2022. Okay. And it's called Reunion, Restructure, and Renew. Reunion, Restructure and renew right talk to me about that because i know if god gave that to you evidently he had to take you through that right talk so to me about that the restructure part is okay i do some things different and some people you know still got love for them we still got relationships we still good but okay they it's just like crumbs sometimes they come off so you got to restructure things yeah and then i have it definitely i look back you know, the things we, I've been through, through the pandemic, uh, defeat and depression. So I'm renewed and then reunion. Uh, I have a joint venture business deal with the young man that I started out with, uh, Kerry Douglas. Yeah. So that's our reunion. And I also use some of my old guys as far as producers, musicians. I re-recorded a couple of old songs that I had and I put them back out. And so it's all up in one. That is awesome. You know we love some Kerry Douglas. Uh, thank God for him as well and all that he's doing in the music industry. So tell me more about your story in getting into the music industry and, and transitioning from a little boy um, um, singer into an adult man. How, how was that transition for you? Well, it was a strange. I was a strange little boy <laughs> at six years old. All my heroes besides Muhammad Ali, and Reggie D Jackson were the quartet singers, Joe Lagarde, the William Brothers, Canton Spirituals, the Willie Neal Johnson, the Keynotes, and Clarence Fountain and the Five Blind Boys of Alabama. So what happened was my dad had a, a he was original, he had a barbershop in New York where he used to play like quartet music out loud. He was a DJ too. So like all the groups used to come by the, sh the shop before the, their concert. So as a little boy, I got to meet a lot of them. So they were my heroes. And then like, well, Prophecy came to me when I was about six years old. Uh, Pastor Shirley Caesar came to town. And my dad, uh, we were, we opened for her on a concert. And Miss Ann, God bless, God bless the dead, her sister, my uncles and them, they, they knew her. So that's how we got kind of got close to them. And then sh when she saw me, she told my dad, bring him on my bus. I had no clue. I was actually asleep. But I remember waking up and I was on her bus. Wow. And my dad being a business now, now my dad took my kindergarten picture. <laughs> Back in the day when they used to blow pictures up, blew my picture up and the mighty clouds of joy, Joe Lagan and Johnny Martin gave me the nickname, the little wonder boy. Mm. So he put it on the bottom of the picture. And I remember her bringing me on the bus and she looked at me, she put her, put her hands, laid her hands on me and prayed for me. And she said, you know, the Lord is gonna bless you. You're gonna really be somebody in this music business. If you, you just keep it up and keep the faith and keep it. And then, you know, I still, when I started, of course I went through so many trials and tribulations as a teenager and everything. So to see this day come for us, uh, like I said, I'm a living testimony that dreams do come true. Yes, yes, you know, somebody's listening right now and you say, hey, it seemed like my dream is not coming true true I've been working on it I've been using my faith and and sometimes people pop in my life they say they're gonna help me they don't follow through I want to encourage you and let you know that God is working it out God is working it's all about God's timing and a lot of times it's not that we don't have the faith we just don't have the patience to wait on God Patience. so I want to encourage you to wait on God He's a living testimony. Pastor Shirley Caesar laid hands on and prophesied into his life and said he was going to be somebody in the music industry. And just about, he, he's a household name across this country. If you don't know Keith Wonder Boy Johnson, you've been living under a rock. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really a saying that I, I kind of had to encourage the younger artists and I mean, just like brand new, don't give up. I tell them, if you want to make God laugh, Tell him your plans. <laughs> That's true. Then he laughed and he said, okay, now this is the plan I have for you. Yes, yes. So it, just because it might not be going the way you think it should go, you know, 
And, and we have. And the thing is, we have to learn to go with God. And, and when you're young, you, you're zealous. I, I can just remember when I first gave my life to Christ. Oh my God! I was the little kid that took my Bible to school. Like mm -hmm. the kids would laugh at me, but I didn't care. When they needed prayer, they came to me. Right. Right. <laughs> Even right. though they laughed yeah. at me behind my back. But you can be very zealous getting into the music industry, and you see all the amazing artists, but you don't really know their story and all the struggles they had to go through. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was, uh, we were very um, blessed to be able to meet the queen uh, of gospel, Albertina Walker, and spend time with them. Even uh, Dr. Shirley Caesar, and, and hear the things that they went through, mm -hmm. traveling across the country during the civil rights days and, and being scared for their life. Mm -hmm. Please know that when you see those people on stage and, 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 and they're famous and, and they're getting booked all over the place, they've been through some things. Yeah. And a lot of times you just don't know. And when you get out there and you see some of the, the struggles that you got to go through as an independent artist, you think it's something wrong with you. Right. But, and I think that's why we have to tell yeah. our story. Well, it was special to me because I, I call him my Michael Jordan. Okay. Uh, as a teenager, one man that really had a strong impact on my life was Harvey Watkins Jr., or the, the lead singer of the Canton Spirituals. Yes. So, I, you know, I had his post up on the wall, but then to, for time to go on and we actually literally became friends. He wasn't, he became more than a mentor. mentor and we would like basically share with each other. And I would share all the stories and I was blessed to be with him like two years ago when he got inducted into the Hall of Fame by the governor of Mississippi. Wow. Now they're from Mississippi. You, yes. you know what type of things went down in Mississippi. Oh, yes. And then he told a story while he was sitting there with the governor that the same hotel that we were staying in, th that hotel was no blacks can go into that hotel. And, on, and one of the original member of the Canton Spirituals, he had like the light skin condition, so he was very, very light skin. He was only allowed to work in the back, in the kitchen, in that hotel just because of that. But like any other one, you could not work in there. And to look at where God has brought us to today. So I, I don't take anything for that. So I, I always enjoy like talking to the special our legends that I know Ira Tucker, Spencer Taylor, yes. uh, you know, um, Clarence Fountain, all these, these young men, uh, the Swanee Quintet, uh, they, that went through, you know, they, they went through that. I ain't talking yes. about TV. Yeah. They went through that where they could not stay there. Yes. And to hear, you know, Albertina Walker's stories and yes. Dorothy Norwood, I, you know, I was blessed. I basically had a relationship with all of them. Yes. Yeah. So, it you know, is. the Lord is always, the world is just like this. They're worrying about it now. Trust me, the pandemic, we, we still rolling. You have to learn how to adapt. Yes. Simple. And, and my, the word that I, I like also as adapt is you have to learn to pivot. And, and one thing I've learned, you know, us being entrepreneurs, that you have to learn to pivot. And even you own your own record label. There are some things you had to pivot this year. You, you started that at the beginning of our conversation, mm -hmm. how you had to dust some things off, make some transitions, and you have to do that in life. And I believe when you learn, the, the faster you learn to pivot, the faster you can get on to that expected end where God has called you and ordained for you to be and the things he has ordained for you to experience. So on tonight, I pray that wherever you are, if God is moving you and, and shifting you and telling you to do new things, don't allow fear to, to, to um, make you pause and second guess yourself. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. On tonight, if you need somebody to stand in agreement with you, I want you to call that number at 770 309828. That's 770 309828. You know, is there some family that you would like to give a shout out to on tonight, Mr. Keith? Well, of course, <laughs> uh, my mama and my daddy. <laughs> I'm trying to get home because, you know, the pandemic hit New York real hard. Yeah. And my mama was like, 
Okay, just <laughs> stay there where you're at. But uh, especially my two daughters, uh, my princess, they, I'm, I'm very proud. I have two daughters in college. Uh, one is at SUNY University. She's a junior, and my baby is a, a freshman at Duke University. That's awesome. They make me so proud. And uh, to all my family, friends, my friends, my relationships, listen, it's about relationships. Yes. That's one thing I try to say. Relationships, you know, always be careful on how you treat people. That's it. You just you just said a mouthful right there because hey we're sitting next to each other because a relationship and it's it's not just making a relationship but maintaining it. You know one one thing we we do know because of this music industry and just ministry um, period. It's about looking out for each other, praying with each other, supporting each other, and if you're going to be a successful uh, entrepreneur, if you're going to be a successful artist, you have to learn to support others. It's not all about you. Right. You have to learn to sow into others. And I've learned in my life, the more you sow, the more you grow. The more you grow, the more God will do in your life and will trust you to do more in his kingdom. On tonight, we, we have just a few more minutes. Um, Mr. Keith, can you just please share an encouraging word to that young man that's that's wanting to give up on tonight listen dreams do become a reality i'm gonna tell it the way the young people say let your haters and the spectators be your motivators don't give up on your dream keep pushing put god first believe in yourself and you will be able to say lord it was you that made this possible for me Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, on tonight, I pray that you were blessed. I pray that God is still moving. Even after tonight, I want you to keep thinking on those things that are good, those things that are lovely, those things that are a good report. 